In this video, I'm gonna run through all of the settings that you find on the brand new Garmin Approach S70 Golf Watch. I'm gonna go through all of the golf features, all of the non-golf activity features, as well as all of the menus and settings too. So hopefully you're gonna be able to learn everything you need to know about how this watch works. You can see here that I've got the 42 millimeter version. So that is the new smaller case size for this premium Garmin Golf Watch. The alternative is the larger 47 mil version. But in terms of functionality, there is nothing different about this watch compared to the larger 47 mil. As you can see, this is an AMOLED touchscreen display. It's got a really vibrant screen on it. And you've also got three buttons on the side. So you've got the main selection button on the top. You then got a menu button in the middle, which brings up this menu wherever you are on the watch. And then on the bottom, you have got the back button as well. If you are thinking about buying this watch, then I've included any links in the description below, along with any discount code so you can pick this watch up for less than retail price. But to begin with, let's start off with the golf functionality. So to get there, you press that top menu button and then you tap here, play golf. Now it's picked up my local courses to me, but of course I'm here in my office. I'm not actually at the golf course, but we can run through what it looks like at my local course. So you select which one and then you choose whether or not you want to keep score, select the tees you're, you're playing from. And there we go. It starts you off on this main view. So on the left hand side, you can see you've got the distances to the front, middle and back of the green. You've got the hole number along with the par. And then on the right hand side, you have got this whole layout there. And that is a much more improved screen compared to the previous versions on the Garmin S62. There's a lot more detail on this map view. Just to give you a comparison of this new AMOL display, this here is actually the Garmin Mark Gen 1. So this is an 1800 pound golf watch. If I just show you the main screen there, you can see the difference in terms of the screen brightness and the screen quality. There is just no comparison. The AMOL display is a massive improvement on these watches. You can also see on the outside here that you have got the counters etched in on the inside of the bezel, one to 18, and you've got a little marker there telling you which hole you're on as well. Now, if you do start on any hole other than the first, then this watch will recognize that and it will start you on the hole that you're at. On the bottom, you've got the auto caddy feature and I'll come onto that shortly. Now you might be able to see a little bit of flickering on this screen. That's nothing to do with the watch. In real life, you don't see any flickering whatsoever. It's just because the refresh rate of the screen is clashing with the frame rate of my camera. But on the left hand side here, you can see that you've got three numbers. As I said, the front, middle and the back. And you can see that there's a little square next to them as well. Now that can change from a square to a triangle pointing upwards to a triangle pointing downwards. And that means it's giving you the plane like distance. So that's factoring in the slope and elevation of where you're stood. If you tap that button, then it gets rid of those numbers and it just gives you the straight up distance, not factoring in the slope. If you want a little bit more information, then you can actually scroll across on the screen and you can see then you get a little bit more of a breakdown in terms of the slope in terms of the elements there, the wind and the rain, as well as the wind direction too. And it gives you that plays like distance. Now those features aren't currently showing on this version because I haven't got it connected to the Garmin Golf app and I'm not at the golf course, but you can see here that I have used this on the golf course so I can show you what the difference is and what that looks like when it's registering. On the right hand side, you've got the full hole layout. And if you just touch into that section of the screen there, then you can actually break down and zoom in more detail and get a little bit more information. You can see here that there's a scroll section on the side, so use that scroll to zoom in and out, depending upon how you want to view the hole. And then you can also see on the bottom here, you have got these arrows. So these arrows are what you use to get the distances to, as well as to carry various markers, as well as hazards on the hole. So if we just scroll through here, you can see it's telling me it's 243 to that red marker there. We scroll up again, oh, I missed that one. There we go, if we go backwards, there we go, you can see that it's giving you the distance to that bunker as well as to carry it. We scroll up again, now it's showing me the distance to the bunker on the left as well as to carry it. And you can just cycle through all of those there. To get out of that, you just press the back button. On the bottom, you've got this little guy here holding the flag, so this is the auto caddy feature. Now it's got the exclamation mark at the moment because if I tap it, it can't give me a suggestion because I'm not actually at the golf course. But when you are at the golf course, it will start giving you suggestions as to what club it thinks you should hit to get you the best score possible. Now it's up to you whether or not you want that to display automatically. I'll show you that in the settings shortly. 
but you can see here from the screen when I was testing this watch out on the course, then when you click into it, not only does it show you the club that you should be selecting and then potentially the second shot from there, it also tells you on the left hand side what it thinks your suggested score might be. And also if you scroll through the different options that the AutoCaddy could suggest, then it will tell you what it thinks your suggested score will be if you go a different route. For example, taking less club off the tee, but then longer club for your approach shot. A new feature with the Garmin S70 is that now on this screen on the right, you actually get a little box that appears as well. And that gives you a suggested area of landing depending upon your shot dispersion. And the more that you use the watch and the more information that the watch gathers about the clubs that you're hitting, the more accurate information that's going to be able to provide. When you approach the green, this screen will actually change to a green layout view so you can see the shape of the green. And if you pay for the additional Garmin subscription, then it will also give you elevation information on that green if it has it available for your course. If you want to get back to quickly check the time, then you just press this back button and it takes you back to your home watch face and then easily press the back button again and it takes you back to the golf mode. Now, once you've finished your hole and you have the setting turned on, then the watch will vibrate and it will switch over to the score entry screen. And from here, that looks like this. So to get to it, you just go to the scorecard and I can show you it now. So this screen will automatically pop up and then you can enter the number of strokes that you took and you select next, the number of putts that you took and then where you hit your tee shot. So I normally lose mine right. And then also you can recall the number of penalties that you may have taken on that hole, and then it will move you on to the next hole. Now that will only pop up automatically if you've got the correct setting turned on. So I will show you where that is in the menus in a little bit. But at the end of the round, the watch will then sync with your smartphone and export the data to the Garmin Golf app. So you can review your scorecard as well as some of the statistics that the watch is keeping. One of the things that I like with the Garmin Approach S70 is that you can actually turn it on so it asks you to confirm which club you hit after every shot. And that means you're getting more data in regards to the clubs that you've got in your bag. But again, I'll show you the setting to turn that on. So if we press the main button at the top here, you then get to your golfing menu. So first of all, you can tap to view the green. And if you want to, you can actually move the flag around. It depends if you want to use this out on the course. Personally, that's not really a feature I tend to use, but it's there if you want it. Press back and you go back now and it will actually register that you've moved that flag to wherever you've moved it and change that middle flag position. Going back through the menu, then you can change the hole that you're on if it hasn't automatically registered you on the correct one. You can easily move it about. And you can see here that I've changed it to a par three and you can see that it only gives you really the approach and the green detail on that par three, not necessarily the whole hole layout because, well, why would you really need it? Going down the menu, the next one here you've got is the scorecard. So you can keep track of your scores and if you need to, you can go back and edit or in case you missed one, then you can put it back in. That's really easy and simple to do. In fact, if I go through and say I edit the second hole as well. So let's say I got a par and I two putted it and I hit the fairway and there was no penalties. If I can go back to, let's see here. Yeah, you can see at the top, the watch actually changes color as well on the outside dial. So not only do you get the indicator as to which hole you are on, but the color represents how you scored on that hole. So you get a really quick snapshot of how you're doing. Going into the menus once more, the next feature to show you is the pinpointer mode. Now I think this is a really good feature. It was on the S62 and it's on the S70 as well. So if you are out of location and you can't see the flag from when you are, then what you can do is turn this on and it will roughly point you in the direction of the flag so you get an idea of where you should be aiming. That, I find, is a really helpful feature. Next up, you can also connect to the Garmin app and get your wind settings as well. As I say, that really depends upon how you've got your phone set up with your watch. That doesn't necessarily just work automatically with the watch in isolation. Next up, you have got round info, so it can give you a summary of how you are doing so far. Scroll down and it lets you know how you're performing in your round in terms of your drives. You can also get details on your greens in regulation as well as the number of putts you've taken and that will populate on the outside as you complete your round. The next thing that you can actually see on here is measure shot. So if you have the setting turned on, then actually as soon as you hit your shot and start walking towards the ball, the watch will automatically pop up at the top with the distance you've hit that last shot. However, if that doesn't pop up or you want to do it and you can hit your shot and then go to this setting and then start walking, then it will measure how far you hit that shot. From the menu, you've also then got club statistics. So you can look at all the clubs in your bag 
and you can call up specific statistics anytime you want. So overall, you can see here that my typical driver distance is 237 with a maximum of 277. And if I tap the bottom on the bottom, then you can see there I'm hitting 18% of my fairways. And at the moment, I've got a bit of a left and right miss with my driver. Coming down some more, it gives you some details on approach shots. You've then got custom targets. So if there's a bunker or water or something else that you want to put on the map that's not currently on there, you can add it on from that menu there. You've also then got the sunrise and sunset details for where you are. So that could be handy if you're chasing a late twilight round. And then you've got settings for the golf features. So let's just quickly run through these. First of all, you can choose your scoring method, whether you want stroke play or Stableford. And you can also then choose your handicap scoring. So you can choose to use the handicap on the Garmin Golf app, enter a local handicap, or do it via the index and slope of the course. You can also turn on your stat tracking or turn it off if you wish. So you can do that from this menu here. Also recording the penalties that you take. Prompt on or off means that you can decide whether or not the watch will automatically prompt you at the end of each hole to enter your score. And I believe you can also score for two players on the watch. You can enter your driver distance. So I believe that if you set that how you want it, then when you go back to the main golf screen, that is where that arc comes in on the main screen, depending on the fact that the AutoCaddy thinks you're hitting your driver. Going back to the golf settings, you've got plays light mode. You can choose to turn that on and off. You can choose to have the virtual caddy automatically give you the suggestion down the bottom, or you can set it to manual so then you have to tap that button in order for the virtual caddy to give you the suggestion. You can then turn big numbers mode on or off. So I think this is a really good feature. So if we turn it on here, you can see now you lose the whole overview on the right side, but you get these ginormous numbers there. You can choose to turn tournament mode on or off, and then you can change your distances from yards to meters as well as some of your other units for the golf wind speed. Club prompt is asking you to enter the club that you hit after every shot, so you can choose to turn that on or off. And then you've got selection in terms of which satellites you want to use, but I just have it selected on all to get the most coverage. Whether or not you record your exercise activity while you're playing golf. And then if you go down to the bottom, you've also got the ability to add the additional CT10 club sensors to this watch but that costs an extra 200 pounds here in the UK. Now those were all of the golf menu settings, but there's an additional menu button here in the middle that I want to run through next. So you can push this button at any time really, and you'll be able to access these quick menus. So you can see here that you've got the option to go through your main watch settings, which we'll cover off shortly. You can lock the device. So that then means clearly you can't touch anything or accidentally change it. So you have to hold a button and then it unlocks the device. If we go back to this menu, you can control your music. So if you've got music playing on your smartphone, then you can actually then play or pause that music as well as music that's actually stored on the watch itself. Now that's something that you may choose to do. Personally, I wouldn't do that, but you can connect Bluetooth headphones to the watch and then listen to the music that's stored on the watch. You can see that you've got the wallet feature here. So if you tap that, then you have to set up your credit cards or debit cards with the Garmin Connect app. Here in the UK, the vast majority of mainstream banks aren't necessarily signed up to that system. So I can't use or test that feature because I haven't got a bank that currently participates in it here in the UK. So you're gonna to need to check whether your bank participates. You can then click here and you can get all of the features in regards to your clock. So you can get access to your alarms, your timer, your stopwatch if you wanna use that, and your alternative time zones. You've got a feature for Find My Phone. So if you've got it set up, well, you can't see that right now, but my phone is currently buzzing and it's letting me know where it is. So if it's buried deep in your bag and you're not sure, that's a really handy feature to have on a quick menu setting. You can turn do not disturb mode on or off. Sleep mode is currently unavailable because we've got a golf round activated. I believe this setting is in regards to an always on display. You can turn it on or off. You've got a flashlight here with various different options. And then at the end at the bottom, you've also got edit. So not only can you move where any one of these settings display, so for me, I'd probably put music controls somewhere near the top. You've also then got the ability to add additional options from this menu. So you can see here, you've got the autometer, autometer, autometer. It's been one of those days. We've got Felicity Stewart messaging us on WhatsApp. So that's another thing about this watch as well, that it can get notifications and you can get notifications in regards to your phone call, your text messages, and your apps. I'll come onto the app shortly because there's a difference between Apple smartphones and Android smartphones. We've got 
the ability to add assistance, so that's emergency assistance, add the barometer, brightness controls, your compass, your sunrise and sunset, and weather information as well. You can add all that to that quick menu setting. One other thing from that quick menu setting, I like the fact that it shows your battery life on the top. That's always a handy thing to have just one click away. At the end of the round, once you've completed it, you'll get the option to end it, or you can just end it manually from the settings here, and then you can save the round, and then it will export those details to your phone on the Garmin Golf app. But for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna discard this round. I'm now gonna run through all of the other features and settings of this watch. So first of all, let's just start with the non-golf activity features of which there are an absolute ton included in this watch. So to get to them, you press the main start button there at the top, but instead of play, pressing play golf, you press these colored dots down the bottom, and then that loads up this quick menu. And you can choose from this quick menu the activity that you want to register. So you can see here that it's got a tempo trainer in regards to your swing, but I've got it set for quickly registering an indoor bike ride, a walk, a run, an outdoor bike ride, a pool, swim. And then also you've got connection to the Garmin IQ store where you can get all various additions in terms of your activities and the settings on the watch. But the key feature here is that you've got that edit button down the bottom. So if you didn't see an activity that you like to use a GPS device for, don't worry because you can press edit and then not only can you reorder these, but down the bottom here, you can add one of the many, 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 so many, just really, I can't believe how many there are activities there in this watch. So hopefully as I scrolled through, if you're looking for a specific type of activity, then you'll find it here from this selection and then it will register both your GPS details as well as the fitness tracking details as well in this watch. So we'll cover those off in a minute, but just to quickly recap, it's got a heart rate monitor as well as a blood O2 sensor in it also. But if we take a quick look and say, for example, that I just wanted to do a run, then we select it there, and then you've got the button at the top here to start your run. So it's now started and it's tracking the GPS on my run, and if I were to put it on my wrist, you can see here, that the heart rate has now picked up very, very quickly sensing that heart rate. And I think you've got a couple of screens here as well. So you can scroll through and you've got lap distance and lap time, and you've got the general time of day. So we go back to the top screen. When you're finished, you press your stop button. I think you scroll through. No, you swipe across to the right. You can choose to save it, exit it, or do a recovery heart rate so you can monitor your heart rate for a couple of minutes while you recover. But for now, I'm gonna discard it. On this watch, you've also got another set of menus that you can access and they're called the widget menus. So you scroll from the bottom up there and you can see here that you've got your date and your battery life and then you've got all these widgets that you can get additional information from. Now, if you want to, you can get to the bottom of that list by scrolling down, but generally we'll start from top up. So you can see here that you've got the weather app, as it were. So the widgets are all just kind of like little apps that you can use. Um, you can see here currently 17 degrees. And if you swipe through, you get an hourly breakdown. Well, it's quite nice this week of a daily breakdown. And then there's 12 hour trend as well. I think you've got one more. Yeah, there we go. Dew point, UV index, and relative humidity. I think this is a really nice screen to show off just how nice the contrast is on this screen. Anyway, if we go back Next up, you've got your notifications. So as I mentioned before, you have got notifications for text messages, apps, as well as phone call details. You can't reply or make phone calls or anything like that from the watch, but you're just getting the notification email. Now on an Apple phone, you can choose to set the details in terms of the notifications that you get from your apps, your text messages, as well as your phone calls but you can't specify which apps you get notifications from and how you get those notifications. If you've got an Android phone, then you do have a lot more customization in terms of which notifications you get on the watch and which ones you don't. But with an Apple user, you're quite limited in terms of what you're getting. And you see on my watch there, you can't differentiate between WhatsApp and any other notification that your watch might ping up. Even though it is telling me that I've got five WhatsApp messages, I can't tailor to say I only wanna get my WhatsApp notifications. Scrolling down there, you've got a calendar. So at the moment, I've not got any invites, but you can see here on Sunday the 4th, I'm playing golf, lovely. And then our, your next one down, you've got the sunrise and sunsets. So that's the same one that I showed you in the golf app. 
Now you've got your heart rate monitor, so you click into that and get a lot more information. So you can see here the last four hours, my lows at 44 and my highs at 77. You scroll through and it gives you your seven day average. So you can see here I've got quite a low resting heart rate at 39 beats per minute. Next down you've got your step counter and you can choose your goal if you want it in there. Details in terms of your handicap, how you're performing. You've got a widget in here in terms of your last round. So if you want to quickly have a look, you can see here I played nine holes at Worley Park yesterday. Shot of 51, pretty disappointing. It gives you some summary information. Very much had a pull left going on, which is unusual because I normally have a big slice, hence why I had such a high score. And then you've got your greening regulations and then details of my putts as well. Scrolling down, you've also got your pulse ox, or so your oxygen level monitor. Now that's not gonna register right now because I'm not wearing the watch. We can see here, is it gonna do it? Nope. It actually changes to a red sensor for that one. Sit comfortably, wear the watch above your wrist bone and hold still. We're not gonna do that right now. No, we don't wanna to try to take it, but it gives you some information in regards to what your history is with your O2 levels. Then you've got information on your last activity, whether that was golf or run or walk or anything like that. Music controls, as I showed you before, you can access that from the widget menu. You've also then got a body battery level. I quite like this, to be honest. It factors in your heart rate, your O2 levels, your sleep performance, as well as the amount of rest that you've got and the amount of physical activity you've done. And it gives you a score for the morning as well as how you're doing throughout the day. So you can see here that, that I started off at 100% and I've gradually kind of worn down so my body battery is currently just above 50%. And then you can also see where I've put stress on the body and the effect that it's had. I haven't actually done any exercise today, so it's still pretty high. At the bottom, you've got a jet lag advisor. So if you've got any upcoming international trips, you can enter them on the Garmin Connect app, and then it will give you some advice in terms of how you should be adjusting your sleep patterns in the lead up to your trip to minimize that jet lag. You've also got a training status one here. So it's giving you your VO2 max, your HRV, and your acute load. And as you scroll down, it's giving you lots of information now, if that's something you're interested in, in terms of your fitness and your gym going abilities. <laughs> that's such a bad sentence. You've then also got some interesting information in terms of your intensity, uh, how you're actually performing. Again, this is good, solid information, if that's the kind of things that you're interested in. And then going down, you've also currently got the sleep widget here. So I quite like this one. You wear it to bed at night and it lets you know how your sleep is. You can see here last night I had very good recovery. And you scroll through and it gives you a breakdown of your awake, your REM, your light and your deep sleep. And then it also gives you a percentage of hour times how you're getting on. I class that as a good night's sleep with a six month year old and a three year old in the house at the moment. I say in the house, they're my children. That was a weird way of saying it. But I find this really interesting. Uh, and in the mornings when you wake up, it gives you a little morning report and a summary of how you, your sleep was that night. Of course, if you want to, you can reorganize where these widgets sit. So if you wanna move your golf preference up or down, it's really easy to do so. And then scroll to the bottom and you can add in additional widgets. So you can see here, you've got stuff in terms of, I believe that's like climbing, uh, your altimeter, your barometer, calories, compass, floors climbed, in fact, I'm not gonna run through them all, but there you go, there's the majority of them there. Lastly, I just wanna run through the main settings on the watch. So we've already been through the golf settings, but now I can just take you through the notifications and alerts. So as I said here, you've got your smart notifications coming from your smartphone, choose to turn them on or off. And then you've got two levels of settings. So you can set your notifications for general use of the watch, or you can set your notifications during activity. So you can see here for during activity, I've got all of my notifications on, but for general use, I've chosen not to have notifications for my apps. As I say, that for me is because as an Apple user, I don't really need all those notifications pinging up while I'm using my watch just in everyday general use. If you click into that, you can see here, you can choose how you get your notifications. So if you select calls, you can choose whether or not you get a notification and you can choose whether or not it vibrates the watch and you get the same alerts for texts and apps. You can also select the privacy, so it, you can actually press the start button or when you rotate your wrist, then that will actually open up what the notification is or you can choose to turn that off. And then you've got a timeout in terms of how long it sits on your notification for. You've also then got notifications in regards to system alerts. So you've got time notifications, 
You've got whether or not your phone is connected or disconnected from the watch. You've got health and fitness notifications as well. So the little annoying ones where they buzz you to get up and move around or if you've hit your goal. So in terms of number of steps or stairs climbed, you've got abnormal heart rate alerts. I think that's quite an interesting feature. So if it's too high abnormally, then it will give you an alert and you can set the threshold. You also get one if it goes too low. And you can see I've had to turn that off because my resting heart rate is under the minimum that you can set it. The minimum is 40 and my resting heart rate is anywhere between 35 to 38. So I kept getting buzz saying my heart rate was abnormally low. It's not abnormally low, it's just low. And then you've also got notifications for the jet lag advisor. You've also got the morning report, which I mentioned. I quite like that report there. It gives you a nice little summary and then you can choose to add whatever you wanna see in your morning report. Scrolling down then, you've got settings for the watch face. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of the settings and combinations that you can have because there are just absolutely loads of different watch faces that you can use. And not only that, you can kind of customize these in so many different ways. So you can see here that I like quite a classic looking design, but I've still customized this. So if you tap it there, then you can choose to customize the type of dials that you've got. Tap it again. We can choose to customize the hands as well. There we go, different style. And there's loads of different styles by the way, but I can't even remember which one I had now. I think we'll go with that one. Tap it again and you can choose to customize the data that it's showing. So on this watch face, it doesn't show you too much data, but I like to show the watch life in terms of this like circular dial here. But you've also then got your body battery levels, number of steps, the number of flights climbed, you've got loads of information in there. And then also you can then choose the colors as well. So the accent colors I've got at the moment is this kind of like bright green, but you can choose loads of them. I like the bright green because on this watch, it matches the green around the outside of the bezel and on the top of that main selection button. So if you tap it again, the data color as well, you can then choose to change the color of the data too. You can really see the great number of choices of colors that you've got. Again, I quite like that purple one. It's quite vivid, stands out and goes well with the green, I think. And there we go. We just press apply and it saves your screen. If we just get back to the settings, just to show you a few of the other settings that we've got here on this watch, you've got settings in regards to your sensors and accessories. So you can add sensors to it, whether that's an external heart rate monitor or your CT10 tags. Uh, you've got settings on your wrist heart rate. So does it automatically check it? Does it check it while you're swimming? Does it give you abnormal heart rate alerts? And do you want to broadcast your heart rate to other devices? Same goes for the pulse ox mode. So that's your blood O2 levels can set details on your compass if you need to, but personally, I'm not using this for any kind of exploring, so I've never had a need to go into that. And you've got settings for the altimeter as well as the barometer as well. Going into your music, you can choose which music providers you've got. So I believe you can actually add maybe Spotify directly to this phone, but I think you've got to do it, yep, through the Garmin Connect app. You can talk about whether or not it's controlling the music on your phone or whether or not you actually have music saved to the watch that you're controlling. You can connect Bluetooth headphones to this watch so you can listen to music from the watch without having your phone on you and you can change whether or not it's stereo or mono. In terms of connectivity you can see here that it connects to your phone via Bluetooth and also it can connect to your Wi-Fi to keep updated and you can select user profile as well. So it's giving you some interesting information that you have to enter and then it will tailor your health data and your suggestions for you, but I'm not gonna go through all of that information. There's a safety feature here. So it can detect if you've had a fall or something like that, and then it can contact your emergency uh, contacts. So you have to set up your emergency contacts in the Garmin Connect app. And then you can change your settings on your health and wellness as well. So we've already showed you the heart rate one as well as the pulse ox. You've got details in regards to move alerts, your goals and move IQ. You can turn that on or off. And then lastly, then you've got some deep system settings. So setting your language, your time, your display. So you can set your display in three ways during activity, general use and during sleep. So if we go general use, you can choose to have an always on display with this watch. So that means, you know, does what it says on its tint, it will always stay on no matter where the watch is positioned on your wrist. You've got a brightness mode, so you can turn that up and down. But to be honest, I like to kind of have that either really bright for these videos, so you can see the full display of, that you get in with this watch. 
But of course, if you turn the brightness down, then you're gonna increase the battery life. You choose to turn your alerts on and off. You can choose your wrist gesture on and off as well. So that means when you rotate your wrist away, the watch turns off. Then you rotate to look at your watch, then that screen will pop to life, or at least turn the brightness fully up if you've got always on mode on. And then you turn your timeout on and off. So you can choose to have it on for four, eight, or 15 seconds. Scrolling down, you've got a do not disturb mode, an auto lock feature if you want that on, but personally, I don't like using that. Set your units that you use, when you're starting your week is, how you show your battery percentage, and then reset the watch as well as software updates. You've also got a map manager, so you can kind of add additional maps or remove them if you're running out of data or want to update them. And then you've got even more advanced settings in the watch in regards to screenshots and other deep, deep settings that I don't think necessarily many people are gonna to be too focused on. Don't forget if you are thinking about buying this very watch, then I have included links to buy it in the description below along with any discount. So hopefully you can pick this watch up for less than retail price. My full review of this watch will be coming out very soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with that when it gets released. And if you are thinking about buying a golf watch, but you don't wanna quite spend all the money on this brand new Garmin S70, then why not check out my full review of the previous premium golf watch, which I've included a link to right here.